be uh, live on YouTube. So then we can start the ten seconds will be live on YouTube. Okay. Abhishek, you may please start. All right. Thank you, Shantanu. Uh, welcome, everyone, on uh, today's webinar. Uh, and uh, today's webinar is on UN's World Youth Skills Day 2020. And uh, the topic being skill development and entrepreneurship post COVID uh, 2000, uh, you know, 20. And today, uh, also being 15th of July 2020, the uh, UN World's Youth Skills Day. Uh, what a what a day to have this discussion, and uh, we have some really eminent speakers coming uh, in this uh, in the sessions post uh, you know the inaugural. And uh, I'm hoping to hear some uh, good views, discussions, and uh, comments on how we can encourage the youth in India. How can we skill them, and how can we provide gainful employment considering the current situation and considering what we expect in the future and um, how do we marry both the requirement of the future as well as provide skills to the youth to ensure that they are ready for gainful employment in the future. So that's going to be uh, an interesting uh, discussion in various topics uh, that are going to be covered in the future. Uh, at, at in the uh, inaugural session today, uh, also we have some uh, eminent uh, speakers. Uh, uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Siddhar Chaturvedi, who's the executive vice president of uh, ISECT. ISECT is one of the largest training provider in the country, providing uh, training to lakhs of youth, uh, both in rural and urban India, uh, catering to both um, uh, formal and informal sector as well. So we'll be, um, you know, hearing about uh, his views. Uh, you know, uh, I uh, uh, formally welcome uh, Danraju sir. Uh, he's the director of skill development for uh, government of uh, Madhya Pradesh. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of his views will also be very critical for us uh, to see how that goes. Uh, and uh, 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 do we have Mr. Uh, Dinesh Patidar on this call? Uh, sorry, Vishy, he will be, he will not be. He'll not be joining. Yes. Okay. So we'll be missing his views. He's the uh, chairman of Wiki uh, MP State Council and uh, MD of Shakti Pumps. As we all know, Shakti Pumps is one of the largest uh, pump manufacturers in the country, one of the most efficient uh, pump manufacturers, especially in the solar sector. Um, you know, they, they are the ones who will be absorbing the people that we are, uh, uh, we uh, as a, you know, a unit are uh, skilling and uh, they have been one of the pioneers in terms of taking skilled youth uh, and freshers. Uh, into the organization. Uh, in case he joins later, maybe he can uh, uh, address as well. And um, having said that, considering today's uh, situation, considering the fact that uh, most of the youth are sitting at home and uh, they are trying to solve this puzzle of what do we do next? And uh, uh, you know, the, the, there aren't many jobs in the market today. Uh, so there is a confused lot of youth uh, which are uh, sitting at home and uh, we need to see how we can ensure that uh, they get uh, trained in the time that they are sitting at home and uh, whatever skills they, we can impart to them to ensure that uh, when the economy opens up, when uh, you know the unlock is completely unlocked, uh, most of these uh, youth are ready to uh, uh, embrace the uh, industry is what we need to look at. On the other hand, uh, industries slowly starting to open up. Um, and while they're opening up, there's a lot of demand for uh, skilled workers in the industry as well. And uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, there is a large shortage of uh, not only uh, workers, but skilled workers as well. So on one hand, uh, there's a youth who is sitting at home and is not willing to go out. On the other hand, I am uh, in touch with a lot of industries uh, who are looking for uh, skilled labor as well. 
so um, you know i'm hoping that this situation will get uh, better and uh, considering the current situation there's a lot of opportunity that we see as well the very fact that uh, people are accepting change is is a big plus point a um, lot of uh, parents and students are willing to use technology to study which was not there earlier um, and uh, even educational institutions um, higher educational institutions the government accepting uh, norms which were not norms earlier so this is a time when people will accept change and uh, it's a good time to see what changes can we bring in the system to ensure that people are geared up to employment uh, in the future with uh, you know uh, keeping uh, all of these things in mind um, i would request uh, mr siddhar chaturvedi to uh, give his uh, views on uh, skill development and entrepreneurship and um, let's hear from him and he is the person on the ground who's been implementing uh, skill development courses so siddhar over to you and we'll be waiting to hear from you on what you have to say on this one well thank you abhishek and uh, uh, you respected uh, dhanraju sir uh, miss barbara from the palladium group me other panelists and all the attendees uh, first of all i would like to you know send our wishes on the world youth skills day to everybody who's connected with the skills ecosystem today also marks the 5th anniversary of the skill india mission and a while back while listening to the honorable prime minister and the skills minister the going to rule during covid and post covid world is skill upskill and reskill and going about all these three in the right earnest with all the sincerity in the coming days uh, the other uh, things notable thing which i would like to say is that in the last 5 years we have covered a great uh, you know distance uh, as far as the skill journey is concerned uh, of the entire country so, uh, in terms of modernization of itis in terms of having the nsti's in the country in terms of opening up of pradhan mantri kaushal kendras 700 of them across the country in terms of launching standardized courses qualification packs and important initiatives like apprenticeship india international skilling centers vocationalization of school education uh, covering 9th to 12th standard uh, students all of these are very very important initiatives uh, which are now shaping up the skilling ecosystem of our country but as the minister and honorable secretary themselves noted this is an incomplete journey uh, even till now and we have a long way to go in terms of further improving quality further improving our reach and further improving the outcomes of all these skilling programs which can happen only when we work very closely with the industry and we work very closely with the demand inside apart from this there are two more uh, you know uh, priorities uh, in front of us and as the uh, mantra uh, which has been given of both atmanirbhar bharat or self reliant india and vocal for local or skilling uh, keeping the local needs in mind so i believe that apart from all the skilling efforts entrepreneurship self employment micro entrepreneurship are going to be some of the other key trends uh, which will dominate uh, the skilling uh, plans and ecosystem going ahead if we have to fulfill our objectives of both uh self reliant or atmanirbhar bharat and vocal for local having said that uh, the other theme which we all have to be uh, you know looking forward to is an increased use of technology uh, increased use of digital enablement and a blended approach in the delivery of skills in the delivery of training in the coming uh, days i believe uh, in the coming days when we have uh, the third version of pmkvy or even the other skilling initiatives apart from the pmkvy scheme uh, there is going to be a larger and a more comprehensive role of technology and online uh, delivery of content when we come to the skilling uh, uh, ecosystem having said that 
nothing can uh, be a shortcut to the hands on uh, approach which skilling is all about and we all need to see uh, keeping the mind uh, keeping in mind the social distancing norms and the way the, com the the current crisis plays out in the coming months how are we going to reconfigure our classrooms how are we going to reconfigure our labs and how are we going to reconfigure the size of the batches which we are going to take up for training in the coming days so these are some of the opening remarks and the trends uh, which uh, seem important in the coming days from the skills uh, point of view and some of the thoughts which i took from the morning's celebration of the uh, world youth skills day uh, in which honorable prime minister gave his uh, very valuable remarks and it was followed by dr mahinath pande dr r k singh and other ministers and secretary with their views i just have a couple of uh, uh, slides and if uh, shantanu we can have them up i can cover them in the next uh, uh, two or three minutes and that will be uh, uh, about it from my side as of now so shantanu are you uh, uh, projecting uh, them or should i uh, use my uh, control you can use your controls okay okay fine thank you yes so uh, just in terms of the uh you know opening uh, uh, remarks uh, and to uh, support some of the points which i spoke about uh, if we look at the very current task at hand in terms of skilling we are talking about the migrant labor which is a major uh, uh, issue right now around uh, to their villages uh, or uh, home uh, states due to the pandemic there is a skill mismatch right now with the local jobs which will need a very strong effort on reskilling matched with the market needs considering that most uh, or a large portion of the returned migrants might not return back to the big cities uh, of course not many jobs are currently available in these home states and we need to look at more uh, closely on micro entrepreneurship and other avenues to create jobs in the local vicinity of those areas uh, some of the sectors which have seen a flip uh, like uh, logistics uh, e-commerce transportation it ites and future skills uh, need a recalibration of our skilling efforts uh, towards these areas some of the industries which are showing a short term downtrend but will come up in let's say one year's time uh, they also need to be a uh, thought through in terms of recalibration of target allocation and the kind of skilling efforts for these sectors there has been a tremendous boost uh, from the government on both msmes and the agriculture sector and job roles and jobs which are targeted to these two teams uh, will see a flip and we need to recalibrate according to that i have spoken about the classrooms in the new uh, scenario and a significant amount of online content Uh, which is a standardized content available in multiple languages is nsqf align if we talk about madhya pradesh uh, alone 10 lakh uh, migrant laborers have come back and the government is currently through their initiatives of rozgar setu uh, trying to uh, skill upskill and reskill uh, these uh, these labor and get them uh, uh, ready for a gainful employment in terms of response plan uh, i'm sure uh, most of the organizations and industries would have bucketed that into a short term medium term and long term response in terms of short term response engaging the students utilizing the trainers and developing basic content and utilizing existing technology uh, should be the key and that was the priority in the last few weeks where everybody utilized either zoom or google uh, meets or whatsapp for staying in touch with the trainees in the medium term training of trainers on online training developing lesson plans analyzing how this entire initiative is going on and collecting feedback from students that should be the priority and in the long term making changes in the curriculums 
revisiting the common cost norms and institutional capacity building for the new world of skilling should be the priorities uh, in terms of digital uh, you know going digital not only for teaching learning but across the value chain making a difference uh, between the synchronous and asynchronous ways of learning to reach out to the rural students uh, effectively a strong feedback mechanism ownership at each level across the organization mainstreaming of digital and online learning and revising the curriculums should be the key to strike the right digital balance for training delivery some of the challenges which all of us have faced or will face is non availability of uniform bandwidth a telecom sector also has a great role to play uh, in leveraging this for all the rural uh, students high amount and additional cost of data consumption currently non suitability of all job roles especially the manufacturing sector job roles for delivery through online medium sustaining the interest of students in the blended approach uh, standardized content availability uh, and migration to a standard lms which involves cost and expenditure are some of the challenges when we try to migrate to the digital world of skills delivery finally on the whole new demand analysis is required uh, with one district one product kind of approach uh, reskilling upskilling and rpl are going to be the key blended approach is going to find more and more relevance skilling for local jobs and accelerating future skills delivery for creating manpower for industry automation and industry 4.0 are going to be the priorities working in convergence mode along with the district uh, administration the dm offices uh, is going to be the requirement and short term medium term and long term response strategy can be a way forward so i uh, stop here and these were uh, some of the opening remarks once again i thank uh, fiki for organizing this very uh, timely uh, dialogue and kick start the state of madhya pradesh thank you thank you siddharth uh, thank you siddharth uh, am i audible yeah okay thank you siddharth uh, so that was a a uh, very power packed uh, presentation as well each slide had uh, a lot of uh, recommendations and each recommendation i'm sure has a lot work a lot of work that needs to be done uh, in it and i completely agree on the fact that uh, atmanirbhar is going to be the way forward uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, self employment is going to be key in the near future technology is going to play a big role and uh, the sector specific approach has to be taken in the skill development ecosystem with the uh, recalibration of a lot of uh, activities and keeping of course the migrant labor in place um so thank you so much siddharth uh, that was a, a very thoughtful and provocative uh, uh, presentation and um, uh, you know having said that uh, i would request uh, dhanraju sir if uh, you you can uh, you know give one or two points of views that you have uh, in the uh, skill development ecosystem of uh, madhya pradesh and uh, what do you think uh, are some of the challenges that we need to tackle in the near future uh thank you uh, siddharth uh, uh though it was very you know short presentation but uh, siddharth covered the entire gamut of uh, issues that we are going to discuss uh, today i'll just add a couple of things uh, to the issues mentioned by siddharth uh, officially there are some 13 lakh uh, people who have come back to madhya pradesh from various uh, parts of the country and madhya pradesh probably is one of those, uh, few states which has uh, done this skill mapping uh, very uh, you know systematically done this skill mapping and it is available on rozgar setu we have done skill mapping of around 7.3 lakh uh, laborers and uh, i mean uh, you know capturing around 23 components like you know other uh, sectors they were uh, working uh, in their previous uh, stint before coming back to madhya pradesh uh, what is the kind of uh, you know educational uh, background that they have whether they had undergone uh, uh you know any short term skilling or rpl program if as what kind of uh, it whether they will be staying back in the state for uh, you know uh, say 3 months from now 6 months from now so these are the things that we have captured 
and that is available for the industry also i know many of your uh, friends in the industry might have logged into the system and uh, that is available for industry to basically utilize the available manpower now you know uh, honorable prime minister is of the opinion that the, these migrant population that has come back to their uh, you know uh, virginal uh, uh, states places of uh, <clears throat> you know their domicile should be skilled reskilled upskilled but i always think whether it is a uh, really uh, a feasible uh, idea i mean uh, siddharth when uh, he comes for concluding remarks would uh, you know uh, throw some light on this because they are those people who are, who, who have been earning uh, based on their skill because they they have the practical skills though they don't have any formal uh, certificate but they have been working and they have been earning earning means they have value uh, for their skilling would they be staying in our institutions for three months four months and we are not paying them anything neither pmkk has pmky has that component of paying some kind of wage compensation to these uh, you know adult uh, learners even in rpl also what is the kind of value addition that uh, you know uh, rpl is going to uh, create for these uh, you know uh, uh, labor that is one thing secondly yes you mentioned uh, all of us agree that life after i mean we used to say after covid now we don't know whether there would be an occasion when we say after covid because it is with covid uh, how our school are going to be how our uh, teaching learning uh, you know practices are going to be it's a very you know uh, unseen kind of uh, scenario now given the uh, you know skilling scenario where you learn by doing to what extent digital platform would be helping us Uh, that is the second uh, thing that i always uh, you know uh, we worried and uh, trying to find some kind of a uh, solution finally as all of you know that you know madhya pradesh has got some 25000 target for short term skilling and some 25000 target for rpl again the problem is i mean i am talking to i was uh, when i was talking to couple of uh, district they were telling that most of the people are not ready to uh you know undergo skilling so these are couple of things that uh, need to find some solution a how to motivate them to come to uh, training centers uh, for short term skilling for uh, rpl then how how madhya pradesh an industry located in madhya pradesh can utilize this uh, skill pool already available so apart from that you know there have always been the classical uh, issues like training centers are not producing the kind of you know skilling skilled manpower required by the you know industry when we say industry should uh, come forward to take the you know responsibility of training there is some kind of reluctance of course the initiatives like naps and others are always be there so how industry can take up some responsibility of uh, training how we can engage and uh, continue this interaction so that we 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 work as mutual uh, you know entities that i produce skilled manpower and you employ them so these are couple of things that i would definitely like to you know uh, find some kind of uh, solutions So that's all from my side whenever i require i definitely thank you thank you sir uh, you know it is always a pleasure uh, having you uh, with us and uh, some of the questions that you posed are absolutely pertinent about how do we ensure that uh, with the limited uh, uh, you know budget and scope that we have to get to uh, as many people as possible but madhya pradesh has always been a leading state as far as skill development is concerned it's probably got one of the best uh, infrastructure as far as uh, skilling ecosystems concerned and most importantly the leaders behind the skilling ecosystem have always been proactive and uh, taking measures and steps which are uh,
beneficial for the entire ecosystem. So I'm hoping this time as well, uh, like you said, uh, not post COVID, but during COVID, Madhya Pradesh will take up steps which are uh, um, which are uh, forefront, and everybody else will look forward to Madhya Pradesh as well. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, your views, and hopefully uh, we will have some more discussions during the uh, uh, event of the day during the day and. Uh, uh, we are with this, uh, we will uh, formally come to a conclusion for of the inaugural session. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dhanraju, sir, for your views. Uh, and I would also like to thank Siddharth for uh, giving his views and the presentation as well. And uh, we will hope for some more meaningful engagement and uh, which would lead to some uh, practical output for uh, the learners as well as for the industry uh, in the future as well. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, take this session forward to the first panel where uh, we are talking about innovation in existing skills and new age skills. And I would like to take, I would like to call upon Mr. Uh, Anuj Sharma to uh, take over uh, the platform and uh, start with the first panel of the panel discussion. Uh, Mr. Anuj Sharma, are you uh, online? Yeah, I'm there, sir. Hi, Abhishek. Thanks a lot. And it was a very good uh, session. Uh, so, our topic for this webinar is existing skills and uh, new age uh, skills. So, we will cover upgrading the uh, existing skills sets, emerging skills, entrepreneurship opportunities, and way forward. So, we have uh, a panel of uh, very experienced uh, uh, industry experts having rich experience in the field of human resources, technology, corporate affairs, and governance and skill development. So today it's, we are uh, doing uh, this session for World uh, Youth Skill Development Day as well. So we have in our panel, Mr. Abhishek Adhikari. He's head of human resources at Agile Airport Services and Interglobe Aviation Company. He's having 18 years of experience. He worked with a lot of MNCs, Aditya Birla Group, Ruchi Soya Industries, PepsiCo, Dr. Reddy's, Laboratories, NTPC, Central Bank of India. And we have panel two, Mr. Ajay Tiwari. He is head of technology at HealthCard. He is having 16 years experience. Uh, he worked with a lot of companies like Pratham Software, Compicom Software, Wipro Technologies, NIL, Labs, Shepherd Technologies with me. And we have panel third, Mr. Rajat Banerjee. He is vice president, corporate affairs, at uh, MMB India Enterprises. He's having 30 years of experience. He worked with a lot of corporate. He worked, uh, he looking after PR, media, and corporate affairs. He's having rich experience in enterprise brand building and a brand maker in today's scenario. Now I would like to request Rajat Chaturvedi, business head at uh, ISEC Group. 17, he's having 17 years of experience. He worked with SDG, SIPL, Cafe Coffee Day, Coffee Day, Beverages, Landmark Group, and currently with ISEC Group. Now I would like to request Amitabh Adhikari. He is head of Human Resources Agile at Agile Airport Services to start the session. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Thanks, Anuj, and thanks for having me here in this beautiful session. And it's always a pleasure to talk on a panel like this and for a state like Madhya Pradesh, which is the heart of this country. So good afternoon, all the panelists. Uh, so I would put my thought in a context. So what, whenever we speak about skill, there are two ingredients which I feel are very, very important. One is the supply side, means where do you get the people to develop the skill? And more importantly, what is the market linkage? So. Uh, these two are the basic things. So if I if you, if I were to look at the skills, I would first look at what is the market for the skill, and then I do a backward planning. So from that context, if we talk about the new and emerging skills, uh, COVID so 2020 you know, March was probably a watershed year in the entire history of mankind. Probably we would when history would be written, we would speak about what happened before March 20 and what happened after March 20. So mm, lots of industries we see are struggling with the traditional skills. People are losing their jobs, all those, that is one part of it. But 
there is something which is emerging and big trends coming up so what are these big trends so if i if i just put on a uh, uh, optimist uh, eye and look at it i find two three things which are emerging as big trends and what is it for uh, for madhya pradesh so madhya pradesh has population of around 7.2 crore and a literacy rate of 70% so net net i am looking at the potential of around 4.9 crore employees uh, people of uh, of the state so why why 4.9 because there might be people who have the skill whose skill suddenly has become redundant so these people might look to might like to look at the new skills so from a pers- from that perspective what are the three emerge what are the uh, trends which are emerging so uh, the first trend that i see is the economy uh, is the e-commerce policy so um, all of you would be knowing that the draft e-commerce policy has been circulated in february 2020 so among other things one key thing with the policy says is uh, the state government should tie up with the e-commerce companies to promote their own state's traditional skills so for example orissa orissa has a gi uh, right to rasogollas and rasogolla is something which can have a market outside and we know there are states which have tie up with the markets globally so when when these states engage with the e-commerce company so they get a supply chain tie up and this skill suddenly the traditional skills which didn't have a market which didn't have a price now with this policy it's having a world market so the product need not only be sold at market at at maharashtra at madhya pradesh but the entire globe is market and and you have technology to do that so that is one big trend so the traditional skills the traditional uh, artisans that we have the traditional uh, the traditional things of the state can now find a ready market and i know for sure there are states which actively work on building up this network so uttar pradesh i know there is a uh, expo there is a expo organization in noida where the state uh, almost every week before covid almost every week they, they organize uh, workshop uh, and uh, org- and exhibitions when, where uh, customers from all across the globe are called and the products are exhibited so these kind of thing i'm sure with the with the e-commerce thing coming in place the states can look at an opportunity so what is in it for me so all those people who had that skill who didn't have that money people the traditional people traditional who are engaged in the skill can leverage this opportunity so that is one big opportunity i see what the second opportunity coming we all saw uh, the covid thing and what we all realized is we didn't have the health infrastructure so state after state we found people were not getting uh, the faci- the medical facility people died because there was no adequate uh, healthcare infrastructure and so when we talk about healthcare infrastructure structure one is the physical place second is the healthcare professionals now look at it how does the country's number stack compared to the standard so we have got around 12 crores 12 crore people who have the e cards under ayushman bharat now who says that as a as a stand, as a benchmark every for every 1000 population you should have 2.59 nursing assistant why nursing assistant because nursing assistant is a skill which is there which is a job role which is defined in nsdc so the the standard is 2.5 every 1000 people india we have got 1.7 nursing assistant per 1000 people so the gap is 0.8 and if you just calculate it for this 12 crore people who are enrolled under ayushman bharat that comes out to a whopping 96000 so that means we require 96000 people for only to cater to those uh, those people who are covered under ayushman bharat if you look at the entire country the numbers would be much more now there is a second fact to it in ayushman in in uh, in atmanirbhar bharat the government has proposed that each block in india would have a diagnostic center so there are more, around 6500 blocks across in the country now each each block having a diagnostic center imagine the kind of people paramedic and support people who would be required to man these things and these are the basic no, um, few, these are the figures which i am telling so 96000 only for ayushman bharat 6000 plus diagnostic centers and the required staff and if you look at the entire population of 131 crore the numbers would be much much more so the second skill set which has a ready market waiting is the is the healthcare professionals so i'm not talking about doctors and nurses i'm talking about paramedics 
so i'm talking about people at the bottom of the pyramid who who still can be converted and how much does it take to train a person or paramedic it takes 3 to 6 months and what is the eligibility requirement it's graduate it's only matriculate so the skill set for vast population is available to come into to come and take up the market requirement for healthcare professional the third trend which i see coming is direct selling so uh, last week tata consumers which was erstwhile tata chemicals they have told that they are going away with around 5000 big distributors so out of total distributor network of 9000 they are simply going uh, they are simply removing 5000 distributors and they would be leveraging technology to reach out to the to the retailers and customer directly and and why because industry now finds a tremendous value in rationalizing the supply chain that they have so uh, there was a sales there was a level of distributor and retailer companies are leveraging technology to make the uh, layers as slim as possible so direct selling as a skill set is emerging in a big way and why are why are talk about opportunity because there are so many people who are engaged in doing the traditional sales people who would go to the distributor who will go to market who will reach out to counters who will go to retailer take the demand now these people just need to rescale to do a direct selling and and again the opportunity is huge because it's a market which is pushing for the skills so these three i find are huge opportunity which which help the state so from a, from a state if the state were to prioritize which are the skills on which they should be looking at you cannot just look at multiple skills and you cannot just have a, a repository that these are the skills i have where do i go from here that's a that does not gives a solution from from, from uh, according to me the starting point should be what is what is it that is emerging as an opportunity and what are the big things which are emerging and as a state how can i quickly plan my my actions basis the opportunity with the market is uh, giving so these i feel uh, would be the opportunity for new skills and thank you once again anuj and everyone for bringing me here for this call thank you so much thank you amitav it was a nice session and uh, it was a really great great thought that you shared with us now it is now i would like to request mr rajat banerji he is vice president corporate affairs at mv india enterprises giving he is having very rich experience Uh, in the enterprise management and pr and corporate relations please sir yeah very good afternoon everybody and thank you for this opportunity to to speak to you all um, i think the introduction to my uh, what i have to say i must thank mr amitabh adhikari you did mention direct selling a couple of times so to an extent uh, there's a bit of an introduction uh, from my perspective and you did speak about something very interesting when you were talking about look there is certain amount of skilling that can be imparted to to the youth but then what next so i come from an industry which kind of um, marries this both and i'll beg your uh, your indulgence for a couple of minutes to give a bit of a background now uh, as the name suggests direct selling it is products directly to the consumer using very little intermediaries you know uh, rather reducing those those levels just to probably one and is this new to the globe or to, to the world or to india no obviously not in fact the hawkers in india probably have been doing this for thousands of years at least 2 um, 3 thousand years that we know of, if not more depending on which which side of the you know um, of the discussion you Corporatized because sometime post Second World War, the unemployment rates in the West, particularly in the US, were very very high. You must keep in mind that there were a huge number of youngsters who had returned from the war and were keen to, you know, who had been derostered from the military but who were keen to restart in terms of econo economy. And they understood a very simple logic that look. daily household use products which is shampoos which i don't use soap detergent cosmetics for for women um health supplements etc everyone uses it so what what evolved out of this need for employment etc self employment and we call it micro employment 
it kind of resulted in a corporatized um, uh, form of uh, uh, and direct selling uh, as we know it today. Today, this is a massive industry. It is uh, close to $200 billion globally. In, in the Indian context, it's much smaller. It's, it's about uh, close to 18,000 crores uh, as per the latest uh, um, uh, uh, surveys that we've done. In the Indian context, it provides self-employment, it provides micro-entrepreneurship to, to close to uh, 60 lakh persons. Uh, <clears throat> The, the good good side, the good story of this, uh, good part of this story is that most direct selling entities, and, and as the introduction went, I'm from Amway, most direct selling entities, like Amway for instance, we not only provide a self-employment opportunity or a micro-entrepreneurship on, uh, opportunity to individuals, um, more than 50% which are women, by the way, in India, but we corporates also take responsibility for training and skilling a large number of direct sellers who come in. Because, see, actually, if you think of it, it's 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 not a it should not be a terribly difficult skill. You're, you're selling daily use products to your to whom are you selling it? You're selling it to your neighbors, to your friends, some family, etc. <clears throat> so, at, at, on the face of it, it should not require a huge amount of effort, but the truth is it does require a huge amount of effort because we've seen at least in, in, in our company um, numerous instances where, you know, simple ordinary housewives who lacked the the um, the confidence to speak to anyone beyond their immediate social circles, that is, you know, parents, siblings, uh, uh, etc. And I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about, uh, let's say, small town India could be any any town or, or maybe even a Mofusul uh, city in, in the interiors, how these individuals, these many of, like I said, very often housewives transform from timid housewives to confident um, sales professionals who run their own small little businesses. And why is it, uh, you know, a, a win-win for this kind of a situation? I did give you the example of World War II, where, you know, were a begging. There were no jobs, but there, you had a lot of uh, manpower uh, to to do uh, to share their skills, to share and to their to their dreams. Uh, as as Amitabh did mention, you know, and, and we all know in the, the post-COVID world, with with the jobs reducing, with the opportunities reducing, uh, this is one industry where you know the truth is over the last four months, our biggest challenge has only been how to reach our products to the consumer, given the fact that if you're in a containment zone, then your uh, stores are closed. But the orders from the consumers haven't reduced. In fact, just yesterday I was, I was seeing, uh, I think one of the Kantar reports, which, which indicated that the um, off-the-shelf sales of, of, of uh, daily use products went up this year as compared to last year. So while the economy seems to be you know suffering certainly is suffering jobs are, are, are depressed right now uh, as are spendings but consumers you know consuming off the shelf products are it's, it's increasing I, I don't know what the what the logic is i think the, that report spoke about people tending to you know stock up uh, during a time of crisis so it could be because of that but net net the point is that this industry uh, gives an opportunity for people with uh, less, you know, uh, or no um, training, etc., to enter into into this entrepreneurship, micro entrepreneurship opportunity because the corporates themselves take on that responsibility. And I know from from the Amway's perspective, for instance, in a in a twelve month window, it might sound a little, you know, an exaggeration, but the reality is we would do anywhere between fifteen and eighteen thousand training sessions in a year. Of course, a lot of these training sessions are product training sessions, but Mind you, unless that seller knows the nuances, the benefits of a particular product, he or she cannot be very convincing because you, you cannot fool you know a consumer beyond beyond a point. You shouldn't in, in any case. And <clears throat> like I did mention in direct selling, what happens is since direct sellers basically sell to their social circles, they cannot afford to let those relationships sour. So there is a lot of uh, of effort. To, to train your people, to skill them. And they, for instance, we have tied up with uh, the Retail uh, uh, and Skill Council of India, RASI, 
which is part of NSTC. And every year between 10 and 15,000 uh, Amway uh, people who are connected with Amway get these uh, certifications and, and this training uh, that we do along with uh, uh, along with uh, RASI and SDC. Well, um, since we are talking about Madhya Pradesh, I can share this much with you as an industry, as a direct selling industry. Uh, like I said, some time back, it's about a 17,000 crore industry in the country, about 60 lakh people engaged in this industry selling various, various, various uh, products. They're Indian companies, there are American companies, of course, European com companies, companies in from, uh, from even uh, China, of course, and uh, Malaysia, etc. Uh, selling various kind of uh, various kind of products. So in, in in Madhya Pradesh itself, we would have close to I think about um, uh, 1.5 lakh people involved in in this industry. And 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 as, and as I as I did share something back in a, in a COVID kind of a time where jobs are scarce, where people you know um, are trying to evolve into a, a new skill set to keep their uh, house fires burning. Uh, some an industry like direct selling can can really um, you know uh, take take lead and and give that opportunity. There is no investment required to join this particular industry. Going back, let's say ten years back, you all some of you might recall that there were you know uh, there were instances where um, where in any industry involving large numbers of people, there could be some players who are good, some in the grey, some will be in the dark. There was some amount of confusion wherein the government then ruled, the central government ruled that look, there would be no joining fees as such. So this is an industry where someone without any uh, educational qualification, without any investment to start their own micro entrepreneurship, get an opportunity to sign up and start uh, their own micro businesses. Where the, where the, like I said, uh, said a couple of times, where the companies take the responsibility of, of not just skilling, but skilling and ensuring that this translates into a, a, a paying kind of a proposition. Uh, those are the few points that I wanted to cover. And uh, I hope I've managed to uh, engage your interest for a bit. And uh, once again, I, I would like to thank the team and MP, the Fiki team for making this possible. That's it from my side. Thanks a lot, sir. It was a nice thought process that you shared with us and the actual market scenario which is actually required that we understand what is happening there in the market and uh, accordingly we can take uh, necessary action, actions actually so uh, yes sir. And, as, and as you can see i'm sitting in office you know <laughs> and, uh, our office is in gurgaon i stay in gurgaon it's it's a, it's a short drive and for a for an important session like this, I told my colleague uh, Ashish and uh, Vedya in Mumbai and and, uh, and and Chignesh Mehta that, look, I better be in office and, and do the best I can. So I hope I was worth, uh, worth your attention. No, no, sir. I can understand. It is a very tough situation now. And uh, you are also managing these things. It's really good and very supportful for us. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now we are moving to the next panel, Mr. Ajay Tiwari. He is a head of technology at HealthCard. He is having 16 years of experience. He works with a lot of multinational companies. So now, sir, please, Mr. Ajay Tiwari, please. Thanks, uh, thanks, Anuj. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak on the topic on this prestigious forum. Uh, so I will just start with. massive transformation due to, due to the current situation of the pandemic we have. And obviously, uh, the very first one is a healthcare and the telemedical consultation uh, that, that we can definitely see it will definitely go with lots of massive transformation for the digital adoption. So I'll just give you a very personal example what I have faced right recently. Couple, couple of months back when I used to have some problem uh, related to my you know health, I had to call my uh, family doctor and he was very you know hesitant to say you know you have to come to my 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 clinic and then only we can do a clinical diagnosis and then i can tell what has happened to you right a few weeks back i had some gastro trouble i just called him and said because i'm having this and this problem he said okay i'm available on this uh, you know online platform you just come in we'll have a session and we'll it was a gastro problem but you know the gastro also mimic the problem of, uh, of, of 
heart trouble at the same time, right? So I was just a bit anxious and concerned at the same time. And we had a session, online session with, them, with my doctor. Now, uh, I just wanted to make sure that I don't have any, you know, uh, cardiac uh, problem. Uh, while having a remote session with him. He said, okay, you have a health watch, right? And uh, you can just do the ECG at your home, just putting a finger finger on your on your uh, health watch and just send it to me and see if there is any cardiac normality because it will just send out the events to you when you are wearing it, right? I just look at it in, into it. I just uh, did the ECG while I was just sitting like this. I can instant do it, right? And just share it with him. And he said, okay, everything is fine, right? You don't have to worry about it, right? Uh, it, it looks fine. You have just a gastro trouble. Take a medicine and you will be up. Now see this power of the small gadget that has been created, right? Uh, I'm just sitting at my home and doing the ECG. A few years back, no more, no more, nobody was able to think about this innovation, right? You can see the gadgets which are coming up. Uh, since this is the pandemic, depression and anxiety would be on, on, on very high. And these kind of gadget will be needed on a very low cost and affordable level. Uh, you can see the headset which are coming, which can actually sense whether you are depressed, you are, you are, you are feeling anxious, you are not in good mood. All those things can be, can be gathered by those gadgets and can be streamed to your medical professional, right? Because it's very risky to visit a hospital, uh, you know, uh, which we used to have you know, earlier. It's, it's, it's very risky, right? So there are lots of, lots of, you know, digital transformation that is going to come on, on, on that line. Lots of compact devices will come up, which will basically measure your health. Uh, health status and will stream those data to your doctor while you are sitting at your home, right? And the so so healthcare is definitely going to see lots of massive transformation on this on the, on, on this front. Uh, other thing is quite generic where interaction with human it's going to be through a through a machine or it's going to through 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 a robot. That's what I can I can I can I can predict based on my limited experience in. You would have already seen, right? You have already heard that government has already given a drone base, uh, you know, uh, uh, a delivery of the e-commerce, and Dunzo and other companies have already starting up. Uh, in, in India, I'm talking about in India. Uh, and in US, already it's in in, uh, in in very advanced state. But uh, in India, also is very and very very uh, adaptive in in uh, you know adopting these kind of uh, these kind of technology upfront, right? Lots of warehouse, uh, you know, automation will happen because. Obviously, what the, the the thing is that we have to uh, remove the uh, you know uh, we have to have the social distancing and we want to interact we want to remove the physical interaction that is happening between humans right uh, we have already seen uh, uh, advantage of contactless payment infrastructure that India's tech has set up few years back the UPI has penetrated a market pretty badly and this pandemic they have done a fantabulous job you know. Uh, we are just setting, you know, everyone is having just a phone and doing a payment. There is there's contactless. I, I don't think this contactless payment uh, was possible if, if if the UPI has not done this. The India stack has not been evolved. And we are we have developed a world class financial uh, you know, architecture. So thanks uh, India stack on, on that front. Right uh, now, if you if you combine and if you try to, you know, uh, uh, find out the gist for, from this problem statement, uh, you see, you have to create lots of, you know, whether uh, no, you have to create lots of, uh, lots of things with, which will enable a remote consultation or uh, interaction with the machine, which can actually understand human, which can, you know, understand lots of things in terms of whether you know measuring your health or doing a certain jobs. Now, to to have a solution on this front, you need basically, you know, broadly two things. One is a software, and one is a hardware. Right. Software, I think India has done a fan, you know fantastic job. We are today, you know, totally atmanirbhar on the software. Launching uh, Arog Setu app within a just few weeks of uh, of of, of uh, you know uh, lockdown, it is it it's a testament of so you know atmanirbhar software. Uh, you know uh, the next.
the same thing on I, I quote all of my gadget the, you know uh, the, the health watch gadget or a hair or a hair band gadget you know we are fully dependent on our uh, neighborhood countries right to basically uh, import those hardwares and then do the you know interfacing on top of it in india those kind of infrastructure is not available if we have to solve this problem in holistic view we have to we have to create that hardware uh, you know manufacturing skills here in india itself right uh, the same thing that we did in 90s for 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 software uh, i think this is the time this pandemic has given me, given us the time to to do the same thing for a hardware also at that time karnataka state was quite you know uh, i would say uh, prompt in um, identifying that opportunity in the software and setting up the silicon valley of india in bangalore and you know taking all the limelight for software development i think this is the time where uh, you know same thing can be done for a hardware and i i think uh, madhya pradesh can play a, a very very vital role in setting up that skill skill set here in in madhya pradesh because i can see you know you can see madhya pradesh has iit it has nit it has lots of engineering college it has iti lots of skill development center i think uh, madhya pradesh has lots of lots of potential in itself and uh, looking at the pandemic and looking at the art nirbhar uh, mission that the prime minister of india has created i think this is the opportunity where you know uh, mp can 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 identify it and and develop the and develop an infrastructure to take a leap on the same line so this is what i had from my side and uh, that's it yeah over to you anuj thanks a lot sir it was a nice uh, thought process that you shared with us and uh, you are aware us that you know in this pandemic situation our uh, technological enhancement that we india done is really a tremendous and digital india and innovation that we done is really proven in this pandemic situation now with us uh, mr raja chaturvedi he is business head at ifit uh, group he is having 17 years of experience he worked with sd g sipl cafe coffee day cafe day, uh, coffee beverages landmark group and currently he is working with isec group he is into scaling placements a lot of innovation research and development so please share your thought with us thank you so much anuj and uh, while i start i would love to acknowledge all the points that mr banerji uh, mr adhikari and mr ajay had made uh, while we go forward i i would like to pick up a couple of points what uh, was made in the previous sessions and just try putting some numbers to it uh, with the current trend that we see the only skill that is going to be prominent uh, in the 21st century is the skill of adapting the new age skills that's the only skill that's going to be prominent uh, so now while we talk about it the markets have changed the markets have changed big time and while we talk about uh, the current job scenarios yes there has been a huge amount of unemployabilities and unemployments that have been created in the market and just to put some numbers in the month of march the unemployment rate in india was 8.4% which by the end of april was already 23% and it's going to be projected to be 30.9% by the end of this month so with that scale if we are going uh, rapidly towards the unemployment we will have to relate two things one that organizations will still need uh, resources to run the operations what they have but they will be very specialized resources and would not be on the basis of the luxuries of having resources second yes the candidates who are willing to get uh, be a part of those resource group will have to upskill them and they will have to upskill basis on the current market needs which are there so uh, while we talk about the needs and uh, the skills that are prominent in the market there is a 128% shift that has happened on the cloud in last one decade one year so the shift of the utility of cloud and the usage of cloud has gone up by 128% in last one year so that itself is a big number to talk about wherein when we talk about artificial intelligence there is a 24% shift in last one decade uh for cyber security there is an expected increase of 12% wherein from 55 billion they've already gone up to 137 billion market in the globe today so when we look at all these numbers and then finally comes the the peak of the numbers which is the current skill gap situation in india so we are india as a market is number 2 in the world today right after japan so japan has a 81% of skill gap where in india is 64% which has a skill gap 
so they have opportunities they have demands but they do not have the skills to fulfill those demands so that is where organizations like us and a lot of other organizations have been coming in with the endeavors in terms of taking up the forte of taking these skills to the market to the rural markets to the semi urban markets and trying to skill those people so that at least we become the contributors in terms of filling up those particular gaps which are so prominent in the current industry today now while we go ahead a uh, current shift towards the technology is not only in the it or the hardware or the sectors it is a 100% shift in any industry we can talk about today from an agriculture point of view to a bfsi to an it to a retail to an apparel everything is being shifted on an it platform or a technology platform everything is automated today to an extent even if i have to get my lg utilities serviced there is a bot service available who would be guiding me on the call and it's not a person it's a call it's a computer who's doing it will be guiding me through the steps that i can rectify the device on my own so i'm saying the companies the industries the markets have understood the pulse they they know the pulse and it's not going to be feasible for them to have huge amount of manpower and everything being available with them to take care of the operations they will move to the automation part of it while they move to the automation part we need to upskill the existing people the existing people will have to grow themselves up with certain skills because just an engineering or just a mba will not fetch them a job going forward because if we look at the current market only 23% of the engineers gets placed so balance are still the people who still have to upskill themselves before they can take up a job so the prominent feature of the coming trend of the industry is going to be the upskilling it's going to be high level of uh, rigorous skilling that has to be required before we can talk about the sh shortening of the gap which is currently standing at 64% and contribute in terms of giving the skilled manpower to the country i think that would be all for me thank you thanks a lot thank uh, sir for sharing your thoughts on skill development which is very important for us uh without uh, we have actually short of time so i would like to thanks to mr shantanu tripathi uh, he is a joint director fikki madhya pradesh mr rajat banerji he is vice president corporate affairs mv mr rajat chaturvedi business head isec group uh, mr ajay tiwari head of technology health card mr amitab uh, adhikari head human resource at agile airport services and all the viewers and a special thanks to chetan chopra fikki technical team without of uh, his support uh, without of his hosting this uh, session would not be uh, uh, view we can uh, view so thanks a lot thanks a lot for dhan raju sir um, thanks a lot siddharth chaturvedi sir uh, for uh, this session uh, now i would like to hand over the session to mr suresh varma to continue this journey thank you everyone uh, this is anush sharma signing out Antonu hey, Mr Anuj maybe if we can uh Suresh yes sir Vishay yeah, since this panel this panel is over isn't it yeah this, this panel is yeah. over so uh, can i request uh, uh the moderator of the next panel Mr Suresh Chandra to yeah I'm Yeah, I'm here. I'm there. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, this is something should be getting there. Your video is not. Uh... Yeah, it shows that it is not there. There is technical problem with the Cisco WebEx. Okay, no problem. Now uh, maybe you can start uh, with your audio. Um, yeah mr suresh and then in the meanwhile you can get your video on as well yeah uh good afternoon everybody uh now we are here with the panel second panel and our topic is skill development and atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan in fact uh, first of all i would like to introduce my panelist uh 
our first panelist are Mr. Nailar Hari Krishnan. He is the head GMR Aviation Academy. Mr. Abhishek Gupta, National Project Manager, ISECT. Ms. Tanupriya Gupta, she is Senior Economist with Asian Development Bank, India Resident Mission. And Ms. Barbara Stenkovikova, Executive Director, Indian Canadian Group. Hello, everybody. And uh, in fact, it's a great opportunity for all of us to be a part of uh, UN skill, UN skill day, as well as today it is the fifth anniversary of Skill India mission. Hello, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you well. Yeah. So, hi, Barbara. Hello, Mr. Mellert. Hello. Hi, go. Sorry, due to certain technical problem, <laughs> I'm not visible. Uh, so, Mr. Mallet, uh, uh, I would like to introduce my in your brief profile with the entire team. Mr. Mallet Hari Krishnan, he is heading GMR Aviation Academy. He is based at GMR Aero Towers, Hyderabad, and he, he is heading Aviation Academy. Both the centers are located at Hyderabad and Delhi. He is basically handed over the responsibility of strengthening and expanding aviation academy. And he is taking care of vision of center of excellence, leading by GMRA towards global consisting and recognition. He is having a rich exposure of corporate strategy, airport development, and work with multiple aviation as well as aerospace company. And a CK and a Aviation Limited, Dublin, RMK Port Advisor, Private Limited, India, Dublin Port Academy, Dublin IMDB, Department of Transport, Dublin, and it's still more. Uh, well, basically, uh, it is right time to use you and hand over the thing. Just please brief us about the GMR Aviation Academy and your initiatives, what you are willing to do with a the skilling domain and how it will help countries scenario of employment yeah so Burma, and good afternoon to all my colleague panelists as well um, no i think this uh, event uh, hosted by Vicky is very relevant in the present uh, scenario present industry conditions and uh, you know kind of the whole uh, translation that has happened from how business was being done until the 20th of March and how we are all adapting to this particular change. Uh, before specifically getting into you know, what we are doing in the uh, skill sector development side, I would like to uh, give a context of uh, GMR Group and GMR Aviation Academy for the benefit of all the attendees of this webinar. So GMR Group, as uh, most of you may be aware, is a large multinational conglomerate. And we are into different industry verticals that includes airports, uh, power sector, roads and highways, and various other special economic zone developments. Uh, so we are part of the airport uh, vertical, which is now the fastest growing vertical for the group. Today we operate uh, five airports in India, basically Delhi and Hyderabad are the main airports. We are developing two greenfield airports at uh, Goa and uh, Bhogapur in Andhra Pradesh. And there's another small airport called Bidar in Karnataka. Other than that, we also have a footprint globally. We have uh, two airports in Philippines, one airport in Greece, that's Crete Airport as well. And uh, recently, during a MNA major uh, acquisition has happened where the French group called ADP Airport de Paris has brought in 49% of the GMR's airport uh, wing. So jointly, uh, along with the ADP group, uh, GMR has now become the world's largest airport operator. So setting that in context, uh, GMR Aviation Academy, you know, we were conceived about uh, 10 years back in 2009 with the objective of uh, ensuring that all the employees at our airports are trained because you have a two-strand approach to when it comes to skill development in the aviation sector. One is what is your regulatory compliance? You know, you have to be compliant to, uh, to your regulators for various sectors like you know, safety, security, uh, concessioners, all kind of operations that we do. And uh, second thing is, of course, we also have to keep developing the talent pipeline, you know, because we handle a huge uh, manpower at all our airports, as you're all aware of. So 
Aviation Academy is a globally accredited entity. Uh, we are recognized by ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization, as their regional training center of excellence. So we uh, presently, as of today, uh, enjoy the status along with another seven centers globally, uh, namely Singapore, uh, Incheon in Korea, then GCAS in UAE, and a couple of other entities in uh, Europe. Other than that, we also are aligned with uh, our domestic regulator, which is the DGCA, we are certified under them. And we are also aligned with NSDC as their training partner and training center. The initiatives that uh, GMR Aviation Academy has done, and uh, with this recent transition, as well as uh, you know, we also have also moved away from the conventional classroom trainings, gone onto the virtual platform, and uh, we are delivering trainings at uh, our various centers. Other than that, we are also working very closely with the state governments. Um, in the recent development in March, uh, we were awarded a center of excellence by Kerala state government, wherein uh, we have set up uh, what we call a CSP community skill park. And the idea is now to you know take the trainings to the local masses. I think uh, I heard one of the earlier panelists also mentioning about uh, how many people have now returned back to Madhya Pradesh um, after having probably lost their jobs or changes in the industry. Uh, similar thing, I think we have uh, kind of encountered with other states like uh, Kerala has seen a lot of uh, people returning back from the Middle East. Uh, similar thing is happening in Andhra Pradesh. Similar thing we have seen in the northeastern states as well. So our uh, initiative is to kind of work very closely with the state governments and uh, trying to set up a center of excellences. We are, of course, also been in discussions with the Madhya Pradesh government as well. I would like to formalize that very soon. And uh, the uh, strategy that we have adopted is, uh, you know, we. We are just not a training center. You know, we want to kind of ensure that we address end to end, you know, from basically training them to ensuring that they're placed as well. Um, at this moment, uh, we've been uh, reasonably successful in uh, completing that com uh, cycle with respect to close to around 85% of uh, placement record for all the programs that we do. And we would also uh, tailor make the programs for not only our own requirements as, as uh, GMR as an airport operator, but also for our stakeholders. So when I say stakeholders, it are all the airlines, you know, who operate at the airport, the ground handlers who handle all the aircraft movements, then the concessioners, that is your retail industry as well. So the airport is divided into basically two major areas. One is your airside operations and the second is city side. So as you know, with the, the PPP model under which, you know, these airports have been privatized, there's a lot of land bank, you know, which is uh, what we call non-aeronautical revenue. So there's a lot of commercial development that also happens. So our trainings are also extended into other domains like hospitality. You know, we've got major hotels coming up there, a lot of other industries coming up there. So our objective is to provide training, you know, in uh, all these uh, uh, gamut of uh, uh, schedule uh, programs. So with that, uh, presently our objective is, as I said, uh, you know, to get uh, more and more virtual trainings to be delivered. Of course, we need the support of state governments. Uh, one of the challenges we have seen in last uh, couple of weeks, you know, after having shifted to the virtual uh, platform is uh, one, you know, kind of the connectivity when it comes to people coming from remote locations. Second, in terms of uh, the technology that we adopt, how this uh, training can be effectively delivered. And the uh, third main uh, re uh, aspect of that is, of course, you know, ensuring if we have to get these people back into placements, then how do we get them into our airports? So, you know, we're trying to, of course, address all three aspects together. And uh, we were working very closely with NSDC as well on this initiative. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, in coming weeks, uh, you know, the sector should start showing uh, a transformation. As you know, most of the domestic flights have now uh, returned back to the skies. So I think with that, we do foresee that, uh, you know, the job opportunities uh, for uh, aspirants in the aviation sector should get revived. Mr. Verma, from my side, um, you know, what I would like to mention about our role in the skill development in the aviation sector. <clears throat> Aerospace is the fastest growing sector in India. And hello, is my, my voice audible? Yes. And in fact, uh, with the, um, GMR group uh, is itself is having a captive requirement of the majority, even you can uh, accommodate majority of the trainees within working your group, right? And it's a great opportunity for us. And it's a great, a great time to listen your word right now. Now coming to Abhishek. Thank you, Malak. Abhishek ji. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Since uh, uh, we are 
the, the uh, biggest university working in the field of education here is ISEC. Uh, I would like to introduce my team, uh, entire team with uh, uh, the brief profile. Mr. Abhishek Gupta, basically an engineering and a math, IRMA uh, pioneer institute in vocational education and skill development. And he is looking after uh, national project manager position for ISEC and looking after the entire skill development project. Uh, Abhishek, I request you to tell us uh, something of the skilling domain that ISEC's intervention and how you feel exactly at Nirbhar Bharat. Uh, as we all know that the inter skilling domain is working on the basis of model of relocation. And since our, our, our working, we feel that the majority of the <coughs> skilling trainees are not willing to relocate from their locations, and especially as far as the remote location. How we can solve and how it, this situation uh, is helpful in, in, in recent context of COVID-19 as well as government initiatives of Art Nirbhar Bharat Abhinav. Please, Abhishek. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Fikki for providing me such an opportunity to share my view uh, for this very important topic on the occasion of World Youth Skill Day. Uh, so uh, first about ISEC, uh, so I will take a minute about I to explain ISEC uh, to all the panelists. So ISEC is a 35 year old social enterprise headquarter at Bhopal. And we are operating uh, in education, skill development, government services. So uh, in skill development, we are partner with all major government uh, ministries and departments, and we are executing a government sponsored training program in across 25 states and having 250 plus skill development center in India. And we are operating in 22 sectors and we are affiliated with 22 sector skill councils. And we are also providing vocational education in 1500 plus schools uh, across India in 17 states in 12 sectors uh, and we are executing uh, one of the pioneer project of uh, uh, in name of PMKK Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Kendra. We have 35 Kaushal, Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Kendra in six states and uh, we are uh, implementing various other schemes like DDU, JKY, PMKY, NULM and all uh, all major skills schemes. Uh, so uh, as uh, 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 Sir mentioned, so I will uh, come to the point of for today's uh, panel discussion so for skills, uh, uh, skills and the new model of skills. So yes, definitely we have to look uh, the new uh, uh, look uh, uh, look beyond the existing model of uh, skill development. So so there may be new model of skill development like uh, ODOP. So there is a state in UP uh, they are promoting one district burn product schemes. So in uh, in the similar manner, we can also promote the similar scheme in MP. Uh, there are some cluster who are who who, who are doing uh, uh, their uh, product uh, sales uh, across India. So 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 like uh, some cluster like Chanderi is famous for the, their sarees, maize for their pair of sarees. Indore we have uh, manufacturing units, also the food processing unit. As we know, MP is winning the award, Kirsi Karma Award for last five to eight years. Uh, so, so we also have a good chance to set up a food processing unit in, in some of the pockets of MP, where we have a good quality of uh, raw material, which can be uh, uh, which can be processed and added value, so it can be marketed uh, not even in India but also the world. So, 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 so that is another one. Then we also have to understand the uh, in policy level there uh, we have to promote. Uh, a entrepreneurship education from uh, early school age. Yes, I know entrepreneurship cannot be teach, but it can be learned in a provided a favorable environments. Since our education uh, is not uh, mixed with the entrepreneurship education, so we have to inculcate the entrepreneurship education also in the in the in the policy level framework, and we have to uh, look. Uh, uh, at, at, at each district level and there should be a dis, uh, individual district wise demand estimation of which skill set is needed at, at a local level to promote the Art Nirbhar Bharat mission 
सो एज एम पी गवर्नमेंट लॉज रोजगार सेतु एप दैट इज अ वेरी गुड इनिशियटिव एंड देर आर सेवन लैक मोर देन सेवन लैक रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ माइग्रेंट वर्कर बट द स्कोप शुड बी एक्सपांडेड एंड इट शुड बी ओपन टू ऑल द जॉब सीकर at at the district level so suppose as a industry want to search the profile in a particular district like devas or harda so so they can identify the right person from that portal itself and uh, and the uh, portal is also map sh should be map at the job role level so it the, this mis should be a dynamic in nature and it should uh, update itself in a quarterly basis so the so, so industry and says same time the student and also the training institute can uh, 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 adjust accordingly <clears throat> as we know every crisis is an opportunity in in disguise so i am very sure in future onward new entrant uh, to the workforce will not be judged on the based on paper like degree or mark sheet but they will be judged on based on their skill set so so if we see this scenario so it will uh, it, it will definitely encourage the skill development uh, initiative so if you have the real skill then only uh, then only you will get the opportunities or the placement and placement we should not look only the base employment there is other way also the, for the placement part so mp being a agricultural state there should be a focus on agricultural self employment opportunities uh there should be focus on a food processing kind of opportunities which can promote uh, the livelihood creation at the local level and uh, uh, one thing i would request to fikki since fikki is a industry body fikki should collect uh, fikki can collect uh, uh, the data of the demand uh, from the industry cluster of mp uh, of the of the real demand of the industry cluster of mp like mandidi or the pithampur in industrial area so they can uh, Uh, sh share the demand with the uh, government and on 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 basis of this demand government will allocate the target to the training agencies so the training agency will provide the quality training and since the job market is open and mapped with the uh, right uh, supply the, then it will uh, match the uh, supply and demand equilibrium so thank you sir uh, i will uh, I, i will definitely ask if any queries uh, in the in the end of the panel thank you from my side thank you vishak barbara is waiting and she is running short of time thank you. sorry barbara you have to wait hello barbara you are getting my voice hello yes not sure if uh, can you hear me if uh, yeah. ms gupta should uh, go before me yeah he had completed okay yeah okay Uh, I would like to introduce Miss Barbara Stankovicova. She is basically, uh, we can call her as a global citizen, and uh, her exposure. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, during uh, talking to her, she is having a versatile exposure as well as approach regarding um, integrated development. Uh, in fact, uh, integrated development of a community, as as well as she is mentoring. and it is fact a thought process and uh, i request you barbara to uh, please uh, tell us about uh, something about the polydium group and you are having vast exposure of multiple mother in fact multi continents not uh, not over the country you are having and uh, please uh, let us know how uh, that will help to uh, in current scenario to to uh, develop a approach that will help us to make a community self sustainable and reliant please thank you suresh and thank you fikian thank you for all the panelists to be part of this uh, great session on the rose day for your skills um palladium group has more than 50 years of delivering projects across continents uh, that are for economic growth and uh, we claim that it's for positive impact we are building positive impact economy So the whole point of our work that we've been working for many decades for international donor agencies, and uh, nowadays we are also working with governments in India, Asia, and Middle East and across the world, helping them to solve the most pressing issues. And one of it is typically the the biggest challenge in the skill gap or how to um, upskill the workforce and meet the demand. So one key approach that we are having is basically the total market approach. We are looking at 
what is the demand and based on the demand we are uh, trying to adjust all the skills um my recommendation when we were discussing with Suresh was uh, learning uh, how we were developing also project large scale projects in uh, in India and in Asia was basically we always look at a theory of change to really bring that impact we have to build a, a log frame and we have to consider skills is one key element key enabler but what are the other aspects of the market that we need to work with and it was rightly mentioned also by Abhishek uh that the uh, demand and supply has to be balanced out um we've been recently uh completing the uh, largest uh, rpl skilling program in india for 3.3 lakh farmers and i would say that learning was uh, very important of how you mobilize such a huge number of candidates to actually be interested in the skilling so that was at the beginning of the session what is the challenge you, you need to really go to grassroots. And I think with the COVID, the biggest challenge is how you will mobilize those participants and make them really aware because the technology is not enough. We need to be uh, in presence. So we managed even throughout the COVID, considering all the of course guidelines, to be mobilizing and to be in touch with all our beneficiaries uh, using the online platform, but also certain level of offline methods because that's, that's the key. I think the the current scenario, the importance in Madhya Pradesh is the, the migrants uh, and there will be considerable amount of them that will be staying in the rural context. And I think it's a great opportunity uh, to also look at it from the way that these migrants have skills that they have acquired in the urban context. And many times they are more educated, they understand the, the more modern way of doing things. And they are bringing this knowledge, this unique experience back to their rural context. So I see this as a great opportunity, how the rural uh, India can you know, up, upgrade and leverage on these skills and put it in practice in their local ecosystem. So I think we have a great opportunity that the right people are coming back. Uh, then it's an opportunity also for the skilling, uh, uh, I would say regulatory bodies or the skills mission to uh, engage the right providers and the right programs that can merge these skills. So there is a need for the real-time registry. There is a registration of the migrants, but these are only between the states. But what about the ones that are within the state? Not all of them are on that platform. So based on that registry, that could be real-time. We could create a really good job match matching. And uh, very well said, with Fiki and other players, the commercial, uh, associations bring those players from those uh, different livelihoods what they need what they how they could grow so one thing is to bring those existing players and help them to use apprenticeship scheme or different scheme to basically expand their workforce right second thing helping those individual uh, uh, beneficiaries the candidates that will be skilled with capacity to run their own microenterprise. Not everyone is born entrepreneur, but it can be learned. And if we help them with some templatized style of micro businesses that they can run and with a little experience and with support of the community, they can manage. So I think the key is also the collaboration with the different departments, the rural department, women and child department, right? That can help in that handholding. There are a lot of schemes that were announced by India government to support rural development and agriculture. We've been mapping it and we are designing programs that can help in this revival and reintegration of the migrants into the rural context and also back into their uh, cities, right? So within the cities, there will be also reshuffle between the, the domestic help support and so on that will be very localized. People will try to minimize their um, travel and so on and trying to look for local opportunities. I just want to add a little bit more on the previous panel that, that I think the new jobs, the digital jobs, the green jobs, there is opportunity there. And yes, Madhya is manufacturing state. So I think there's also opportunity to bring from abroad uh, uh, some potential products that could be uh, produced in India. So I think that's one space where the self-reliance and, and also the opportunity to export again uh, to countries that are partnering with India.
So that's probably from me, maybe uh, the opportunity importance that with COVID, I think in each training, uh, we are currently in embedding the, the COVID awareness and considering how to manage uh, the COVID situation in the context of, of their specific job roles and uh, qualifications. Thank you. Suresh, thank you. To introduce a holistic approach. Now, I would like to introduce uh, Kanupriya ji. Kanupriya ji, hello. Hello, Kanupriya ji. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, see. yeah, yeah, Kanukriya ji. Uh, now the panelists. Now we have skill at Nirbharta, now institutional part. We have the skill development institutions. Now coming to the last but the foremost important part of the institution building. Uh, Kanukriya Gupta ji uh, is uh, belonging to the Asian Development Bank and she is uh, working as a senior economist with ADB since 2012. And uh, she is uh, career, uh, working as a career development result, MSMEs, economic corridor, education, skill development, and she has contributed in the International Food Policy Research Institute. And uh, her project is related with the agriculture value chain, agribusiness and trade. And uh, she has also contributed in United, uh, United Nation Development Project. Uh, Sorry, now we are running short, but we are willing to know exactly what kind of developmental approach ADB can provide us for the for entire skilling domain in Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. Um, thank you very much for the introductions and a good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, thank you very much for the invitation, and ADB is very happy to of this uh, endeavor so adb has been supporting you know several uh, initiatives under atmanirbhar bharat uh, recently adb has provided a uh, dollar 1.5 billion emergency support to pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana and also health sector interventions focus is on immediate priorities such as uh, disease containment and prevention as well as social protection for the poor and economically vulnerable sections of the society, especially women and disadvantaged groups. We've also provided grant to strengthen the implementation framework and capacities, including uh, monitoring and evaluation systems of the health services, social protection programs, so that benefits can reach out to the needy people. Further moving forward, uh, ADB uh, is uh, also in dialogue with the government for further possible support for stimulating the economy, uh, supporting strong growth recovery, and also to build the resilience for future shocks. Uh, this inclu includes the support for affected industries and entrepreneurs, particularly SMEs, uh, by facilitating their access to finance through credit guarantee schemes, MSME integration into global and national value chains, through enterprise development centers, and credit enhancement facility for infrastructure projects. And then uh, another important uh, agenda is strengthening of public service delivery, including extension of uh, comprehensive primary health services in urban areas, and also secondary and tertiary health care systems through PPP modalities. Now, on specifically on skills development uh, for Atmanirbhar Bharat, which is self-reliant India, both development and MSME support focusing on cluster development are necessary preconditions. And COVID-19 has again pressed the importance of skills development and most importantly, skill system, which needs to be more agile and responsive. So in the longer run, we believe that there are significant returns to skills and particularly important for adaption to dynamic and economic uh, change. ADB has been supporting Government of India with technical assistance and loan financing for skills development since 2012. At the state level, ADB is currently supporting skills programs in the states of Meghalaya, Kerala, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Odisha, and Madhya Pradesh. 
uh, particularly Madhya Pradesh program is a very important program for uh, for ADB and for India. It's uh, it's a support to the construction of global spill spark, which is a very important state initiative to bring international practices in skills development for the youth of the state and also for the neighboring states and India as a whole to enhance their employment, to boost the economic growth and also to support the national priorities such as uh, uh, Skills India, India initiatives. Uh, we're also preparing projects for uh, SAM and also, also school education projects for uh, Central Ministry and Gujarat. ADB's uh, skill support strategies uh, have three main objectives. One is to accelerate skills programs to serve each state unique industrial and employment needs. Second, uh, establish a systematic skills path from basic to higher level of training, especially for states, priority industry sectors. And third, to harness uh, the state's institutional capacity for implementation and monitoring of training outcomes. While this is more like a supply side and we also, also supporting the demand side, which is MSME sector. So ADB is very new to this sector and in 2000, 19 Ministry of MSME requested uh, for support from ADB on a new institutional framework to strengthen the competitiveness of MSME clusters through development of value chain, common facilities and public infrastructure. Now this program has two interlinked components. The first is the strengthening of the institutional framework for MSMEs through a three tier institutional structure of NRC, which is National Resource Center Enterprises, which is at the center, followed by SRC, which is State Resource Center Enterprises at the state level, and EDCs, which is Enterprise Development Centers at the district level. Uh, this will be complemented by uh, integrated technology platform to digitally service MSME requirements. And the second component is supporting integrated cluster development to support hard and soft uh, interventions. While we love, we're also reaching out to many states uh, for the preparation of uh, many cluster development, uh, uh, cluster development uh, uh, schemes. And one is like we're supporting uh, ODOP scheme of Uttar Pradesh, which was launched in 2018. And the policy offers financial assistance for skills development, marketing, branding, uh, technology, upgradation, and common facility infrastructure. So what ADB is doing is ADB is supporting government of UP of ODOP schemes through preparation of diagnostic study reports. These are detailed reports which are uh, which 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 uh, includes current skill gaps analysis, uh, the studying the entire value chain projections of emerging job roles across the value chain over the medium uh, term. So right now we are focusing on two main sectors, uh, textiles and metal products. So this is, uh, these are the initiatives uh, from ADB and, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions if uh, the panelists or anybody. Thank you, Kanupriya. Thank much. you so much. Uh, Mr. Dhanraju, Dhanraju sir is also with us. Dhanraju sir, I request you. Uh, if you are having any query, any question or any suggestion, so that we can, we can conclude. Uh, Hello, Dhanraju sir? Yeah. Sir, uh, putting such a wonderful uh, panel, in fact, I have made, you know, very elaborate notes and I'm yeah. definitely getting back to uh, some of you uh, at later stage. But at this stage, I am uh, thankful to all of you for uh, you know involving me in this uh, webinar and uh, educating me uh, on many issues. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, now we are already taking extra time as per the allocated time, and it is time to. And say, share vote of thanks to the entire team. I'm thankful to Fiki for extending opportunity to create such a platform. Thank you so much. Um, ISEC University, Siddharth, Siddharth and entire, his entire team uh, for make this event a very 
successful event and creating a, a platform to develop a holistic approach to make these things. Uh, thank you, Dhanraju sir, for sparing your valuable time and extend us your valuable um, opinions. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for uh, everything, whatever the support, whatever the knowledge and information you have shared with us. Thank you, Malat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth sir. Thanks for listening and thanks for sparing your valuable time and support for everything. Thank you. Thank you, Shashank. Thank you, Mr. Tripathi. And it is right time to hand over the thing to pick it up. Mr. Abhishek. Uh, thank you so much. Shantanu, are you online? Shantanu? Thank you, thank you, everyone. And I think we may close. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. It was a pleasure listening to all of you all. And uh, hopefully, we'll meet up uh, sometime soon physically uh, as well. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. And uh, um, uh, we'll meet each other soon again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vishay. Thank you, Shantanu. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Goodbye. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.